everyone, it's Terry from Tangerine Mountain and this is my model Tiffany. Hello. So today we are going to show you how to wear a hoodie sode with hakama. So this is a graduation style. It's been around since the Meiji period actually. Meiji period? What? Yeah. So what timeline is that? So about uh, the turn of the century basically, around the 1900s. So yeah, that's been around since about then. And uh, it's very popular in Japan, but also we have a lot of people in the States who want to learn how to do this. So we're going to show everybody. Let's do it. All right, sounds good. Now I have a couple things for you guys to remember about Hakama in general, okay? The first thing is, is that Hakama are meant to be worn with a kimono under them, not like a haori or a gi or something like that. Really? Yes, and you'll see when we get this on you okay. that the hakama have a very deep V on the sides of the body. Okay. So if you don't want to flash people. Which not really. Which not really. <laughs> so that's why it's better to wear a kimono with the hakama. Then also another thing to remember about hakama is that they're worn outside the kimono. Outside. Outside. But really? Yeah, they started out kind of like as the rough kimono equivalent of chaps. Believe it or not. And people love their chaps. I know, right? But chaps were designed to protect your pants. Okay. Hakama were designed to protect your kimono. I guess that would make sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's why you're always going to wear your hakama on the outside of your kimono. All right, so let's get started. All right. Sounds good. The materials you're going to need for this are your furisore, a couple of koshihimo, a date jime, a hanhaba obi, and of course your hakama. Now of course if your furisore juban sleeves are a little bit too long compared to your furisore, then you can always just pin it or you can stitch them to make them a little bit shorter. It's done in Japan, it's done all the time. Now, one difference between how you would typically put on a furisore and how you put on a furisore with hakama is that you're going to bring up the bottom hem of the furisore a little bit higher than you otherwise would so that it's not peeking out from underneath your hakama. So typically you would have this so that it's about ankle height, but in this case we're going to go up a little bit more towards the calf. So not Harajuku style, just to the calf. Yeah, just to the calf is okay. fine. Now, of course, we've covered how to put furisode on in another video on our channel, and the link for that is in the description below. So I'm just going to get this on Tiffany really quickly so that we can get moving onto the hakama parts. Now that we have the furisore on, yes. we are going to be putting on our hanhaba obi. Why are we doing a hanhaba obi instead of a fukuro obi? Well, that's because the hanhaba obi is thinner. Okay. We're going to be making a small bow with it in the back. So not a big bow, just a small bow. I love me my bows, but mm -hmm. all size matters. Mm -hmm. So small bow is going to help us keep the hakama on. The bow actually is going to form sort of the foundation that the straps of the hakama are going to wrap around so that it stays on your body and doesn't fall off. Good enough for me then. Sounds good. And if you want to see a video, because we're going to speed this up a little bit. If you want to see a video of us doing a bow tie with the hanhaba, mm -hmm. the link will be in this description down below. Exactly. And now it's time for the big event. Pants. Pants. Hakama, which are kind of pants, kind of not, but we'll call them pants. It looks like a skirt. It kind of does look like a skirt. So here's a couple things to know about Hakama. Okay. For graduation style Hakama, 
you're going to be looking at hakama that usually are very pretty, very decorative. Sometimes they'll have embroidery, sometimes they'll have ombre. They can have all kinds of interesting design elements. Typically in the back, they just have a flat band, sometimes with a little bit of padding or cushioning. So they don't have the thick back plate that you okay. might see in the other style. Now, another thing to know about graduation hakama is that they are meant to be worn right around the ampere part of the waist. So you're talking about just under the bust line. And that's why they will seem very long and that's okay. Now another thing too to remember is that when you have these back straps here, these are the straps for the back, sometimes they will also have other decorative elements to them too. Oh. And that's because you can tie them around the front in a variety of ways. You can tie them in a bow, you don't have to tie them front and center, you can put them off to the side, you can do all kinds of fun things with them. So many times graduation hakama are prettier, proofier, sometimes- It's a celebration. Yeah, it's a, it's a celebration. They're more exciting. Okay. All right. If they were knotted in the front before you put them on, then you're going to need to undo those knots and let the straps hang loose, which is what we just did thanks to the magic of film. You're going to keep in mind that you're going to start with the front of the hakama. So you're going to put these on so that you're tying the front straps first. Now, since these are lantern style hakama, they're basically like a skirt. And I'm going to have you step in one foot, then the other. All right. And we're going to bring them up to where we want them here. Now, thank you for holding those. We're going to turn you around. Okay, so right now it looks like the back of the hakama are just falling flat and showing your rear end. That's okay, this is the process. We're going to take the front two ties and we're going to crisscross them over the bow. So again, like we said earlier, the bow is actually used to help keep the hakama on the body and help keep them from falling off. I'm going to, once I cross them over the bow, I'm gonna pass them up to the front. I'm gonna turn you back around, Tiff. Okay. So at this point, we have these two ties. We have the band, the top band of the front of the hakama. We're going to crisscross these ties right under that band. Again, that's also going to help keep the hakama stable and on your body. So I'm gonna pass these back to myself and turn you back around. <laughs> and then from here, I'm just going to bring the two ties in the back. I'm going to just tie a simple square knot. So I just tied one simple knot. This is the top, this is the bottom. Top goes over the bottom, up, and then through to make that square knot. So now that we have the front of the hakama all set up and tied in place and we're doing good, we're going to now put the back on. Some hakama will have a spoon stitched into the back. It looks like just a small piece of plastic that's sort of oblong on one end. And it kind of looks like those wooden spoons that you get with like the cheap little cups of ice cream and you take a lick off of it and you get splinters on your tongue. That's kind of what that spoon looks like. Sometimes it's stitched in, you can also get them separately and stitch them in yourself. But the main thing is, is that this part of the hakama, this wide band is going to sit on top of your bow as if your bow is like a shelf. So I'm gonna take this part and I'm gonna just gonna kind of wedge it in there, basically putting it on top of that shelf and I'm going to pass the ties forward. Now, as you can see, we have a bit of a hump here over the obi. That's normal, that's the look that we want to go for. I know it's different than the way things are done in the West, that's okay. This it's is the way, hump. it's a good hump, right? Now, another thing also to remember is that when you're wearing hakama, generally speaking, the slope of the hem is going to be a little bit higher in the back of the body than the front of the body. That's okay, that is by design. So now I'm going to turn you back forward here. 
And now we are on the last part. We've taken these back straps, brought them forward. I'm gonna turn you just a little bit. Now for stability, we are going to take this first strap, tuck it up underneath the straps that we did earlier. That's gonna help hold that in place. I'm also going to crisscross this one. Crisscross the applesauce. And tuck that one under. And bring that forward. All right, and now, because I'm sort of off to the side here, this is very trendy in Japan, I'm going to basically make this bow sort of like we do when we're tying a bow obi. So this tutorial has multiple bows. Remember, we like bows. We do like bows. And as I'm taking this middle portion here, I'm going to bring it underneath all of the straps because that tension is going to help keep everything locked into place. It's actually very stiff, so it's this is good. This is nice and solid. It's a little hard to tuck this under, and that's really what you want because you don't okay. want your pants to be going anywhere. That's right. Right. So I'm gonna tuck the last bit in. And now we are a nice, oh, that's so cute. neat little bow. Look at that. All right. Now we have our Furisore and Hakama graduation look. Thank you so much for watching this video and thank you, Tiffany, for being our model. Happy to be here. All right. Now, if you liked this video, make sure you click the like button and share it with your friends who are also interested in learning how to wear fancy pants like I'm wearing right now. Mm -hmm. If you want to see more educational content from Tangerine Mountain Imports and Designs, make sure to click the subscribe button and also click that notification bell. That way you know when we put up new videos. And then if you want to acquire any kimono or hakama of your own, you can feel free to visit us at www.tangerinemountain.com. You can always find us on our socials, of course, and you can join us in our secret stash group. It's on Facebook and we've done hakama sales that never make it to the website in that group. So come on, join us. It's a, it's a secret, but not really. It's a secret, but not secret. Yeah, so it's not that secret. Share it with your friends. Yes. But only your favorite friends. Yeah, just your favorite. Just kidding. All of your friends. All of them. Yeah. yeah. Let's get everybody in fancy pants. Everyone needs to have fancy everybody pants. Everybody needs to have fancy pants. I'm not kidding. These are very comfortable. It's a very nice look, isn't it? It is. I love it. Now, I want to get others dressed in them, too. So yes. make sure to reach out to us in our socials, through this video, through our email, if you are interested in getting fancy pants like me. Thank you so much. Love you guys. Bye.